Hey everyone, welcome back to episode three of Let's Talk About You. I'm your host. If it still feels so weird to say, I'm your host, Ben Robinson. He's the host. <laughs> and um our special guest for this week is Colin. Um, before I let you give yourself a little introduction, I always just like introduce each episode because like people who come from like your post about it might like, I don't know, not know what goes on here. So basically the goal of the whole podcast is to spread awareness on different things or just like talk about stuff that like is important to us. Each podcast has a different topic. And basically we have a little conversation about it that goes on for like half the podcast. Then we answer some questions and then we play a little game. So without further ado, Colin is our guest this week. So let's talk about you. You can give yourself a little introduction, whatever you want to do. I am Colin. My username is yeah, Colin. Um, I do the app called TikTok. Um, oh, yeah, that's it. So basically the topic that we kind of decided on, it, it, it's usually a very vague topic and then we just go like super in depth with it. The topic for this week, the vague topic is judgment. And basically anything that regards that, um, dealing with it, it can honestly like go a lot of ways. There's judgment on social media. There's judgment like from people in your life yeah. based on like what, like what you do, what you, how you express yourself, judgment from your parents, from based on like choices you make, things like that, all things related to judgment. So basically, do you have any experiences specifically where you've kind of dealt with it? Like ha also, have you dealt with judgment on TikTok from like people that you're friends with and stuff? Okay, so people when they talk about like usually judgment or the, the hate, you know, they're always like, oh my God, I get hate. Like for me, um, I mean, obviously I've gotten hate comments every now and then. And like, obviously not everything's nice, but for me more of like, I wasn't really worried about people on TikTok like saying something mean about me. I was worried about my friends because it, it, it's obviously people think TikTok's weird. And I thought TikTok was weird. I was like, that's one thing I'm never going to do. Like if you catch me posted on TikTok, kill me. Like that's not happening. But then like Corona hit and I just did it. And you know, I didn't lose friends or anything, but like people thought it was weird. Like people definitely thought it was weird, mm -hmm. but like you have to realize you literally have one life. And like, I've always wanted to post on like, YouTube, I, you know, I tried YouTube first. I didn't tell yeah. you this. I tried YouTube before TikTok. Oh, really? And I posted three videos and I spent like a lot of hours editing and I got one follower. Beast. <laughs> yeah, literally. And I was like, this is not going to work. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, like I definitely, I posted a lot on TikTok before like quarantine and Corona and stuff, which was like, I don't know. It, it was kind of weird because I wasn't super into it like I would post once every like once in a while and I had a few videos do really well and I go to a really small school so it's not even like the normal public school atmosphere where like if you get if you blow up on TikTok kids are gonna like bully you in the hallways but I definitely did have like my fair share of kids just being like oh like you were on my for you page or like oh you're the TikTok boy and I didn't, I literally did not care at all because honestly, when I really started to get my following, it was only because I had more time to post, not because mm -hmm. I like didn't really care about judgment and stuff, but I definitely have had people talk about me. People are like, oh, like Ben's videos are so weird or like make assumptions about me mm -hmm. based on my videos, which is honestly, it doesn't bother me. It's just weird to me that people think that they could just do that and that they'd be right. One bad experience I had was when I notice when you don't see people for a while, you get really bold on TikTok, not you, like people in general. Yeah. And that was me. I got really bold and I posted a video. I don't know. It was one of the twerking phases, you know, every now and there's like a twerking phase. I don't know which one it was. And I thought it would, I thought it'd be funny. I wasn't trying. Like, I don't know. I don't have, I literally have the legs of like a stick bug, <laughs> but I did it. And I noticed I like, this is such a random, like I, I went through my comments for one second and I saw someone from my all boys high school comment this boy sus might be the imposter or something and i was like wow and i blocked him and then literally to my face i saw I, of course i run into him somewhere i was with a friend he pulls my friend aside in front of me and goes yeah that kid's gay like have you seen his tiktoks like in front of my face it was just the first time i've had like face-to-face -face judgment really yeah like honestly with judgment on social media you don't know 
you don't know the person from just looking at their social media account at all. Like there's no way you could possibly know someone from looking at that. They only know what you show them. And that's why like when you comment something about someone, regardless, even if it's of their appearance and you think that like, you know, like you look at them and you're like, I can judge their appearance because I see them. It's not, it's never like that. And honestly, like people, people's character extends way beyond their appearance. So judgment on social media in general is never justified, if that makes sense. Like, Mm -hmm. because you don't know the person. So basically what I'm trying to say is to the listeners out there that, you know, I mean, because I was also this person before I had a following, I didn't understand how it felt to like have comments directed towards me instead of being the person who's directing the comments. It's like, you, you can't leave a comment judging someone and think that that's okay because you never know that person. And on the flip side too, like, I, I do want to give advice for people who are receiving judgment because no matter how big of a following you have on social media, even if you don't do social media, like you just have it like, you know, as a social media user, there's always going to be judgment. Even if it's just from kids at your school, it, it, it's a range. It could be like, mm-hmm. you can receive judgment literally from like your friends, kids at your school on social media, all the way up to like being an actual social media influencer and receiving like tons and tons and tons of comments from random people that you don't even know. The biggest advice I have, and I'll let you give yours as well, to people who are receiving judgment is it goes along with what we said before. They don't know you personally. Even if they're commenting on your appearance, like they would 99 times out of 100, they would never say that to your face. Social media makes it so much easier to judge. And also something that I tell a lot of my friends that like receive judgment is to put it into perspective. Like even if you get one like mean comment out of your entire comment section of like hundreds of people, that's like go into a room with a hundred people it like and one person doesn't like you. That's a pretty good ratio if you ask me. So no, I agree. And I like, I, I've never like, read com I mean I read comments I read like the top ones but I've learned that like I mean I, okay I read I don't want like people to think that I don't care about my comments like I do but I've learned that like mentally it's just better to like not because seeing something bad does like I don't really care if people make fun of how I look really because you know well I don't like it obviously I'm not like yay make fun of me no I'm like well mm. But like when people make fun of your personality that like affects your head because you're like, wait, what if I am like really annoying? Or like, what if I am like this or that? You know what I'm saying? And like I, I, before social media, I always thought if someone called me annoying, I would be like, fine. But if someone called me ugly, I'd cry. And it's just kind of not, it's kind of vice versa, honestly. You have to value yourself over other people's opinions. And it's so easy to say, but it's really hard to do. And I'll obviously like, give you that like I, I I struggle with it every day but you have to value yourself over the opinions of other people because at the end of the day we all die anyways like you have to work on yourself like you have to focus on yourself and only take into account the opinions of other people in terms of growth you know what I mean like if someone is like you're a mean person take that opinion and grow from it and try and be a better person but if someone's like oh, I don't like you because like you're not funny and you're annoying. That does that literally doesn't have any effect on the type of person you are. And you can't listen to that. Like you just can't, you can't let that like change your view of yourself. Yeah. And I think just like, it's so easy, especially the beginning of high school, like freshman year, sophomore year, even mostly freshman year, but like to care about like what the popular kids like their opinions on you because like your real friends won't judge you for thing i mean like real friends will make fun of you like that's part of being friends but, like real friends genuinely won't judge you for like who you are or what you do or what your interests are and if they do like you don't need them you literally yeah. all need like corona's tommy all you need is yourself really mm-hmm. friends are yeah. and even like you have to think in the long run too like all the people that you're friends with now look at each of them and think to yourself like oh does this person really like make me feel good about myself or are they a judgmental person because you don't need everyone to be happy like you don't need to be friends with everyone and if someone is like genuinely a judgmental person it's almost better to 
not value them. And I don't mean that in the sense of like, not care about them if they need your help, but like, don't value their opinion over like those that actually care about you Mm -hmm. because like only certain people are going to be with you for the long run. And you have to think about the long run, like only really like keep the people close to you that make you feel good. Like for an, I'll give like a quick example because that's like so true what you just said. Like my friend, like I have really good friends. They tell me like they want me to do, like they want me to go far. Whereas there's someone else who I didn't mention earlier, but there's someone else who literally told me like, it's embarrassing. Like everyone thinks it's so weird. I'm like, I'm not friends with him. I don't talk to him. And like, I think when I realized that like that comes out of a place of insecurity, maybe jealousy, like you're the one winning. If you're doing what you want to do, you're winning. And that's really all that matters. Yeah. That's another point that I was going to bring up is the root of judgment is jealousy and insecurity. And this is something that my mom would always tell me is like, whatever people say to you is a reflection of how they feel about themselves, which is some it's advice that's actually pretty hard to take and Mm -hmm. implement because if someone says something mean to you, your first reaction is going to be to feel bad about yourself, but you have to take that extra step to like separate yourself from the situation and be like, okay, this person, if they were genuinely happy with themselves, they wouldn't feel the need to bring others down. People who judge you for like just being yourself are probably jealous that you're being yourself because they feel insecure about some part of themselves. You know what I mean? Literally. So while we're on judgment, we're not going to like go into cancel culture, but we're just going to like quickly go over like our opinions and like what I think overall, I mean, obviously I think cancel culture is terrible. And I think I've been not the creator at one point, And I know it's so easy to like believe everything you hear and like get obsessed with what's going on and like hate on someone, but it's just genuinely cancel culture now does not accept growth. Cancel culture now, like is like if, if you did something years ago, it can like, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you didn't know. And I think we need to remember how important like growth is. And that even with this past year, me, myself included, I've been educated on so many things I would not have known last year. And also like, I mean, I really think that like the epitome of cancel culture right now, at least is and it, it should be education because at the end of the day, cancel culture is going to exist in its own weird form. Mm-hmm. But like everyone's goal should be to make people a better person and to educate them. But right now, the epitome of cancel culture is judgment and just to like pick apart who someone is and even to just be like the second someone like slips up, people judge every aspect of them. Oh, like they always annoyed me, actually. And like... like- this happened. I saw it coming. Mm-hmm. Like I never liked them in the first place. Stuff like that. Like even if someone does mess up, it's never, it's never okay to judge like them as an entire person because like no one's perfect, especially kids on social media are young kids. Like they haven't lived their whole lives yet. Like it's never, never okay to judge someone for not being perfect, especially when they're young and they're just still learning. And like, I think we should like use cancel culture. I think we should change the name because that just sounds terrible. But like, we should use calling people out as a way to educate other people, educate that person and then move on and grow. And if they mess up again, well then like that's on them for real. Like they yeah. knew when they did it, that's messed up. Yeah, exactly. Like it's literally so centered around like judging other people for every aspect of themselves, which is frustrating too, because like, I've been friends with so many people who have fallen victim to cancel culture and you know, I'm not going to, it's it, this doesn't go for everyone who I've known, but most of the time it's a genuine mistake because they're kids and I know them personally. And I know that they're a good person and I've gotten comments, honestly, who, and I just, I, I'm not going to like, you know, for whatever sake, I'm not going to say who I'm talking about, but like, you know, I've gotten comments that people tell me, Oh, Like this person isn't a good person. You shouldn't be friends with them. And I'm like, how can you judge someone from like one mistake that they've made and tell me someone who knows them as a person that they aren't a good person? Like you can't make that judgment of them surface level based off of like cancel culture, based off of 
canceling them from one mistake. You just can't do that. It literally doesn't make sense. And you don't know them. And it's like, people are always like, um, like imagine if you were in their position, but I think people don't actually really think about that. Cause like genuinely yeah. imagine if you were in that position, just don't, I mean, like people deserve to be called out, but like, I think death threats and like the inability to recognize growth and allow someone to move forward is something we should work on. Um, also, this is like a complete switch, but I, I want to talk about judgment from, because I think this is a big thing that a lot of people deal with. I, I definitely want to touch on judgment from like your parents, because a lot of people, and this extends into so many aspects of your life, but a lot of people really don't agree with their parents. And I'm sure a lot of people listening right now can relate to this. No matter how much you try to express yourself, there's always going to be, I mean, not always, but often going to be some level of judgment from your parents. And that honestly hurts the most because it's like the people who, again, this isn't, I'm not speaking for everyone I'm basically speaking for myself and seeing if people relate to me, but like it hurts the most because it's the people that you have always looked up to and that have raised you. And the main thing to recognize is that like, I I don't know, nine times out of the 10, it's like out of the kindness of their heart and they think that they're doing the right thing. I'm not speaking for, you know, everyone's parents. I don't know y'all out there, but Like for me, when I've, when my parents have judged me and I've like felt bad about myself because of something, it, you know, it comes from a place of like, they're trying to help me. They think that like, I don't know, like if they're judging me based off of a decision that like I'm doing something wrong, but you know, the the only person that truly knows yourself the best is you. And so that's the main thing to think of when you're dealing with judgment. And I definitely recognize that it's the hardest when it's coming from your parents, but like, even they don't know all of you. You know, I don't get much judgment because, I mean, I do get judgment, but like I realize that what they say is out of like a place of wanting the best for me. And I have to put myself in their perspective. And like, if I was a parent, would I want my kid doing this too? Like, maybe not. And it's just, um, I'm not doing stuff they would be embarrassed of. So... I keep that in my mind. I when I post TikToks, I'm like, would my parents like this? Sometimes maybe not, but yeah, for the most that, part. That's, an, that's another thing is like, you know, a lot of the times if your parents have given you judgment for things, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but keep it in the back of your mind when you make decisions. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. would my parents approve of this? Because, you know, if your parents aren't like super strict, like tiger parents, yeah. Speaking from my experience, when my parents have given me shit for things I've done it's honestly probably because I'm in the wrong so I keep like what would my parents say in the back of my mind no like yeah sometimes like I'm I'm like no like I'm pretty sure like they're just not up to date like I am right and then sometimes like no I should enough Mm -hmm. so it's situational yeah Um, but I think it's important to know that it's because they care not because they hate you yeah exactly and judgment from friends also is really difficult to deal with more so than random people you know what i mean i find it yeah i i think i think judgment from friends personally for me that's the worst because like i feel like judgment from your family like your relationship's not gonna like like you're not gonna like break a relationship and judgment from friends that is serious probably means they're not your friend but like friends that joke around with you means they are your friend and if like at the end of the day they want the best for you And that really just shows like if people show jealousy, you know, jealousy is normal, but I think jealousy for someone's like future is just a bad sign. Yeah, exactly. I think there's, you have to really assess the type of judgment you're getting, Mm -hmm. but for the most part, if your friends really, if you feel like you're walking on eggshells around your friends because you don't know, like, what they're going to say or how they're going to act towards you. You feel like you have to, I'm sorry. You you feel like you have to like behave a certain way to like be their friend. Number one, that's definitely a red flag, but I would bring it up to them. That's my main advice is always, and you know, this is a lot harder for other people to do, but I'm super outgoing and I'm super good with like engaging with people. My instinct 
immediately is to bring it up to them right to their face. Be like, Hey, I don't like when you, I don't like how you treat me when I do this. Or when I tell you this, I feel like you're judging me, things like that, because immediately you're going to know where that judgment is coming from. If they're like, I'm so sorry, you're right. Like I'm wrong to do that. Then that judgment probably isn't super serious. You know what I mean? But if that engagement doesn't go well and they're still rude to you, that person isn't someone who you want to be friends with. And that judgment is probably from a place of insecurity. Yeah. Like everyone experiences that for many of things. And I think, and like, it took me a really long time to find like friends that I really like. Mm-hmm. And finally, by sophomore year, like I did that and I figured out like who my real friends are. And I feel like that's just like a really good feeling. But just know that it is a journey and you're going to have friends that, you know, they may not be a bad person, but you just like you guys may not just meant to be best friends. There's, I think it's so I think it's great having like acquaintances. And I think it's also great knowing who like your besties are. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it takes a while, but it sorts itself out. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, like I, and what I said before, it isn't to say that like, if someone judges you, they're not friends with you for the right reasons, because like people who I consider my best friends in the whole world, I've received like judgment from them and not even just judgment, but just like things that we haven't agreed on. And it's all part of the process. Everyone's growing and maturing and the people who are truly there for you and truly want the best for you that's why they're giving you feedback that you might not like in a sense, yeah. because I don't even want to say just like judgment because they may just like say things to you or give you advice that you don't like. And you're like, why would you say that? Everyone who's truly your friend is doing it for the right reasons. And, you know, even if they are like, Oh, I didn't really like that you did this, or they're like, I don't like how you act when you're around this person that type of judgment is always for the right reasons. They're just explaining to you how you make them feel. And I would want people to do that to me. Basically, just to wrap up, um, let's both give a little piece of insight to just like in general, like people dealing with judgment. I'll go first if you want to think, because I kind of did just say previously what I'm going to. But basically, if I if you take one thing from this episode from listening and thinking about like the judgment that you receive and how you deal with it, take it, take everything with a grain of salt and always use the judgment to try and improve yourself, but don't use it to try and tear yourself down. Take it with you and be like, okay, I'm going to work on this. And because at the end of the day, life's a journey and you know, everything happens for a reason. Take that judgment and become the best person you can be. Mine would be because this is coming from someone who before you know, anything, it's taken me a while, but like I cared about other people's opinions more than anything else in the world. I thought if people thought me weird, then I was weird. I failed. Like I, I'm, I cared about judgment. That's like really what I focused on, especially from judgment from people I wasn't friends with really judgment from like the people I considered popular and friends, but like Mm -hmm. there was both. And what I would just say is what really like helped me was just thinking that like, if I don't do this, I don't want to regret that when I'm 40 it's better to know than not know. So do what you want because other people's opinions don't matter, especially in high school, four years, you never see them again. Don't let it affect you in the long term. I definitely can relate to that too. I took like the opinions of other people. I cared about that so, so, so much. And even just a short couple years after, because middle school, freshman year, like that was all I cared about was just like how other people perceived me, what other people thought about me. Just a short couple years after, I can already tell you with full confidence that that shit does not matter. Like it's Mm -hmm. been a couple years and the people that I, not that I cared most about, but like the people whose opinions I cared most about aren't even in my life and I couldn't care less. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know. It's just everything is, nothing's permanent. So don't like, you can't care about other people's opinions more than you care about your own well-being. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm sure people have questions. Okay. So, um, a lot of the times, like, I mean, not a lot of the times I've done two episodes, but when I see people who ask questions that we already kind of addressed, I like to bring it up and kind of like summarize what we said. So someone did say, 
um, how do you feel about cancel culture? We, we talked about the judgment aspect of it, but mm -hmm. um, I could talk about this for hours. I just want to keep this very quick. I'm sure you could talk about it for hours as well. It's such an interesting but frustrating thing. I feel like the idea of cancel culture is super, super flawed and no one gets the point out of things. You know what I mean? Like if someone says something that is offensive, no one takes the in, the actual point, which is like, we need to not normalize saying this. We need to like become better. They, they just attack that person and they don't try to educate them or educate anyone. Yeah, I'll make mine concise too. Cancel culture is going nowhere. We need to bring in the factor of growth and recognize that people really can change. And that doesn't mean what they did wasn't wrong, but I think it's more important to teach them and recognize that literally within a year, someone can change so drastically and learn so much about what's right and wrong. And we should take that into account and just tell them, Hey, that wasn't cool. This is why let's do better. Mm -hmm. And I do want to clarify because we both had this in our minds, but I want to clarify, we're talking about people who like have a slip up, you know what I mean? And make a mistake or say something wrong and you know, start to receive hate towards them. Not people who commit actual crimes. They yeah. should be more than canceled. Or just people, let's let's call them repeat offenders. People who continue to offend people, like, knowing we need to cancel them. But even then, people don't cancel. They just continue to give hate. To cancel someone, you have to, like, unfollow them, not engage with them at all, and, like, let them, like, let their account die like get rid of them you know what i mean like don't continue to give them the attention that they want um okay what's your favorite thing to do in your free time well i just started playing minecraft again and i love it so much i have a gigantic world that i've had for like a year and a half and i just continue to add on to it when i take up minecraft as a hobby again it's so fun i love it that's what that's my favorite thing to do I guess for my free time, I've like regained my interest in YouTube. I like for the longest time, I was like, I do not have time to watch a 10 minute video. No, but now I really like it again. So I think YouTube is what I do in my free time. This is a good question. How has having a platform changed your views on society's problems? Honestly, like in the best way possible, it has kind of like forced me to be a better person. Now that I have a platform, it has forced me to like be educated and like, you know, spread awareness and be the best person that I can be because I have people looking up to me. And also it's just kind of reminded me that like, reminded me of the diversity in the world and of like, like all of the world's issues that need to be addressed because now I'm someone that can play a part in addressing them. For me, it, I mean, I agree with the educating. Like, I've literally learned so much that I would not have known without TikTok. And I also, and I just want to be a good influence. Like, I just want to, like, I want to be able to, like, speak on things that I care about. And I also have been more aware of, like, what people say. And I'm, like, you know, telling them, like, you probably shouldn't say that. And not to be, like, annoying, but, like, it's for their own benefit. Like, I think yeah. the more we educate people the better we can grow. And I feel like the more people are educated, the more cancel culture will like just dissipate because people will know what's wrong and what's not. Next question. Oh, someone said, what slash who is your biggest inspiration? Honestly, I don't have like big inspiration as like a person, but like definitely style. Um, Emma Chamberlain, like I, I basically like transform her style into guy's style and that's how I dress. Um, For me, mine not in style as a whole is Emma Chamberlain. I think, I think everything, like I think she just, the way that she started her own brand is just so like her coffee brand. I think it's so inspiring and shows that like you can really do anything with hard work. Like she worked really hard with her editing and with herself. She wasn't putting on a persona. She wasn't doing anything it was her computer and like, that's it, a camera. And I think that's just really, and like, it's so cool to see how far she's come and shows you that like, you can find who your real friends are and it's a journey. Yeah. And like with kids nowadays, having like adults tell them like, oh, like, you know, social media is stupid. Like get off your phones, blah, blah, blah. She is the prime example of why like 
the internet is like a completely different thing than a lot of people envision it. Like she took the internet to like an entire career. She took making videos on a streaming platform into a multi-million dollar home in LA, making a coffee brand and clothes and merch and a podcast. And she has her own fucking like IGTV series that she produces in a studio. It's like basically a little like TV series. It's so cool. I think most importantly, like overall, just to close this, what she does is she is an example of how social media can be a positive place. Mm-hmm. She's always positive. She's not bringing anyone down. Um, literally go to her TikTok, her YouTube, anywhere. Like she's just funny and mm-hmm. herself. Yeah. So to answer the question of who's your biggest inspiration, we both agree that it's Emma Chamberlain. Also, my parents, obviously. But, you know, on a, on a less serious note, like just inspiration on like how to express myself, be a cool person, Emma Chamberlain. Emma Chamberlain. So um, okay, here's one last one. This is a shorter question. Where will you be in 3.6 years? <laughs> I 3. will be 6. in college, hopefully in California. I really want to go to college in California. Me and Ben have like the same life and it's really weird. We both want to go to the same school. Like mm-hmm. here's what I'm, unless like I devote, I mean, we know I never, I don't want to say we're all being 3.6 years because I don't know. And I don't want to like make a plan and like, you know, because that's like sad. Mm-hmm. Um, but not to be the person like, I just want to be happy. I just want to like be happy. No, like, but genuinely, I think that's really what matters because I think when you're happy, you can like, you're able to do what you want and like, you can do it well. I, I agree. I just, I want to be like a genuinely happy person. And, and because I believe like with happiness comes like accomplishment and like, you know, doing cool things. I just want to be doing cool things in California. So that's, that's, we'll conclude the questions there. They were some pretty interesting questions. Um, again, I always give this little spiel also, I hate that word actually, but I don't know a different word to use. Just a fun fact. I hate that word. Um, (laughs) I always, we always record on Sundays, but there's no set time because people are busy. I'm, I'm busy. Guests are busy. So if you want a question to be answered, uh, pay attention to your phone on Sunday. Not that I'm a super important person that you want to be paying attention to. No, you are. Let's be clear. (laughs) Yeah. But like, um, I, we record podcasts on Sundays. I always post um, a little picture of the Zoom w- right before we start recording and I ask for questions and I go and answer them usually like within a half hour of receiving them. But yeah, so for the little game that we play at the end, this is fun. Okay, so the traditional game of, it's going to be the traditional game of f- kiss, Mary kill slash fuck, Mary kill. But we're going to switch the first one to like, be best friends with because I think that kind of captures three categories a little bit better. So like I have a couple groups of three people and you're going to choose who you want to like be friends with, marry and kill or just get rid of. I don't know. Anyway. Or just like push to the side for later. Give them a little slap (laughs) in the face. (laughs) Um, Be friends with, uh, marry, push to the side for later. Yeah. Uh, Our, our adaptation of kiss, marry, kill. Okay. First group of people. I, I can't believe I spelled his name wrong, but I spelled Bryce Hall wrong somehow. But um, Bryce Hall, Danielle okay. Cohn, and Trisha Paytas. Okay, here we go. Be friends with um, Bryce Hall because I feel like that could get me, you know, a lot of money. Um, and, you know, I am going to be the richest man in the world. That's just like could, my step there. could protect you too. Marry Trisha because we would get divorced very quickly and I would get a lot like of awe at how our marriage down spiraled so quick. And then I would push Danielle kind of the side because I think she has a lot of issues right now. She's not ready for a friendship or a marriage and she just needs to work her own stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Good advice. Um, okay. This one's actually going to be pretty hard. The next, the next two after this, I have four groups of people. The next two after this, I think are pretty mm-hmm. easy, but this one is the hardest one. Dixie, Charlie and Addison. Oh, that. Okay. Um, be best friends with Dixie. She's like hilarious. Mm. Um, oh my gosh. Wait. Right? Like, Probably marry Charlie because she's closer to my age, but I would marry either of them. Probably marry Charlie because she's closer to my age. I think she would be a great dancer at the wedding. Um, and, you know, she would cover the expenses. And then Addison, I'll push to the side. And then I'll probably um, marry her later and just not tell Charlie push her to the side and then like apologize later. 
Yeah, put her to the side and then like become best friends with her because I want to know Khloe Kardashian. So right, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, this one I think is pretty easy. Emma Chamberlain, Sherry Nicole, and Perez Hilton. Um, Perez Hilton, push to the side. Um, Very Mary Emma Chamberlain, be best friends with Sherry because then I can rekindle my friendship with Addison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last one. Um, actually, this one might be hard. I don't really know. Actually, not really. James Charles, Tana Mongeau, and Sienna. Sienna May. <gasps> no, that is hard. I love all of them. Yeah. Um, be best friends with Tana. She is hilarious. I think she'd be funny. She's also just um, crazy. I'm, like, she- I married Sienna because I think she's positive and she's probably funny too. I don't really know her as well. And then push James Charles to the side and then become his best friend later. Okay, so that concludes the little episode um, with my friend Colin. Um, Basically, again, if you're new, this is going to be posted on Wednesday. I aim for like 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but I'm not really a time person because it just never really works out. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is Wednesdays. It's uploaded on Wednesdays, Wednesday mornings. Let's go with that. I don't know. Maybe I should be more strict with a schedule, but I'm not. You're human. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I got a comment recently that was like, how do we leave feedback? I try to read my Instagram, like every Instagram request that I get. I try. I don't always get to them. But um, if you have any feedback questions or people that you want to see in the next episode, DM me on Instagram because I will probably see it. Um, now I have a little list of people to thank, um, because I'm doing this with a wonderful team of people. So thank you to Sarah, the video editor, Audrey, Daniel, Sydney, and Lou, the directors, um, and my awesome team of graphics designers as well. That's been really cool. Uh, Xander, my production manager, and then Aiden and Ari, who are the producers. Also my friends. I love them and everyone else. Um, and you Colin, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Ben. This was really fun. I know. We got to pretend like we were Emma Chamberlain for a sec on a podcast. I know. Like, we literally vicariously threw her. Yep. I literally love her so much. And we're both wearing the merch, too. So, yeah, that was our that was our little podcast on judgment with an underlying theme of how much we love Emma Chamberlain. Thank you guys for listening. And tune in next week. I don't know what else to say. Goodbye. Thank you, guys. Love you guys.